What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. This is Carnoob and today we're going to learn a little bit more about coding your BMW. This week I don't have any modifications or any maintenance to do. Um, I do have a video coming up on brakes and some of the differences and how to tell which kinds of BMW brakes your car has. And since I don't have anything new to install on the car, um, there are some cool things that you can do with your BMW and for a very, very small price uh, that can help, I guess, enhance your car in some ways that you know they're already in the system and you're not really hacking into it or anything crazy like that all of these settings already exist it's just that based on the country based on um the model the trim whatever of your bmw uh, some of these things may or may not be already toggled on or off i'm not gonna get too in depth about all of the things that you can do with this um, application but i am gonna point out uh, some of my favorite things and uh, what i think is i guess the most useful if you learn anything from this video and if you find anything useful please let me know how this um, improved your car and if you have anything you'd like to add or anything that you think I could learn from you uh, please don't hesitate to throw it down in the comment section uh, without further ado uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started I'm gonna uh, start this by saying that coding your BMW is not entirely free up front basically there is an application that you have to buy in order to um, gain access to uh, to these things but it is just a one-time purchase you don't have to pay a subscription you don't have to pay it again every time you buy a car once you buy the app it is yours um, and you're able to uh, use it on any car that you own and there are a couple of requirements you that you would need first uh, you would need some kind of an OBD adapter if you don't know what that is OBD is the port at the um, in your car that allows for diagnostic computers to be plugged in that's how the dealerships um, can um, do things and read off codes and things of that nature and there are adapters that you're able to purchase and then connect via Bluetooth and then use with your own phone assuming you have the appropriate application so what I have here um, is a VPeak OBD2 adapter basically you connect this into the OBD port in your car and when you plug this in and uh, turn on Bluetooth you will see that it is immediately there um, I am gonna go ahead and at least walk you through the process of setting this up connecting it um, and then which application you would need to begin coding your BMW all right we're gonna go ahead and get started by uh, just first connecting the Beamer code application with the OBD adapter. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and start it up. Uh, the first splash screen just asks us to connect. We're gonna go ahead and hit connect. So here it's going to ask us how would we like to um, connect. So there are many different ways to do so with different cords, cables, right? Uh, OBD to ethernet, things of that nature. But for us, we're just going to use VPeak. OBD check, BLE, I imagine that means Bluetooth or something with it. So we're gonna say connect. Beamer code would like to use Bluetooth. We're gonna say okay. Now it is talking currently to the OBD adapter. It is just uh, going to try to connect. I have found that it works a little bit better if you move, um, if you move your phone closer to the OBD adapter, but okay. So now he's going to ask us what kind of vehicle do we have. Um, so for us, we have a four series um, F36. So we're going to uh, leave that connected. Hit continue. It does its status, port spin, all that good stuff. Okay, so most of the features I'm going to talk about are going to be in the front electronic module. And I'm gonna start with one of the ones that annoyed me the most when I first bought the car. So every time, you know, I, I get in my car, start playing music, I drive, I, I arrive to my destination, and then I'm, the, the phone is connected by Bluetooth, everything is playing, music is playing. Um, I turn off the car, music's still playing, I open the door, music still playing music basically continues to play all the way through until you're out of your car you close the door and then you lock it 
when you lock it then by default um, the music would stop playing or the iDrive system I guess will shut off so uh, something that I coded really really early on was this shut off iDrive system when a driver door is open so basically Usually I don't open my door unless I'm getting out of the car. Uh, when I arrive somewhere, even if I sh uh, power off the car, um, the, it won't stop my music or anything like that. But when I'm ready to get out, I will go ahead and um, open the door and then um, I drive, I drive kind of stops. As soon as we open the door, it turns off. Then you can go. However, if you're concerned about getting out of the car while somebody is in here um, and turning off the iDrive for them if they're waiting for you or something like that, um, it's totally fine. If you open the door first and then turn it off, it's going to remain on. And if you close the door, reopen it, it will shut off. The next one I'm going to talk about is one that is available in Europe by default but on the North American BMW models it is not. Something that I always found really cool was that when uh, on a hot day, let's say that you wanted to open all of your windows and your sunroof to air out your car a little bit before um, going in there, you are able to do that by simply holding the unlock button on your key fob. On European models, if you hold the lock button, it would then close everything back up. It would close your sunroof and everything, uh, but in North America, you can't do that. But using Beamer code, you are able to. So convenient opening is active by default. Convenient opening with remote control is also active by default. However, convenient closing by default is not active. So I have already, as you can see, coded this to be active. And then what you can also see is how big of a delay you want to have. Uh, you can choose one second, one and a half seconds, half a second of how long you would have to do this to hold it uh, on, in order for it to start closing. And then um, I do really enjoy how you have the option to have a delay for the front windows and then a spe separate delay for the sunroof so they're not all kind of closing at the same time. I'm going to show you here what that looks like so you can see. One other feature that I really, really liked was fold slash unfold mirrors automatically. What that means is that every time you lock or unlock your car, uh, depending on which one it is on already, uh, the mirrors will fold in or unfold. By default, this is not set to be the case. Uh, so using the Beamer code, you can code that as well. Make that so whenever you leave your car, click that and mirrors will automatically fold in. Okay, the next feature I want to talk about is in the head unit section here, as you can see at the top of the screen. And it has something to do with audio. Um, I have already set this to for the warning chime to be this uh, BMW i warning chime uh, to show you what that sounds like. Uh, I'm gonna turn off the car, start it back up. You hear that? So that's a little bit different than the factory BMW sound. Um, I did enjoy it at first, it was really cool. It was one of those things, oh, finally I have this BMW chime. Then after a while it just kind of gets old. Um, this one is a little bit modern and I don't know, I, I don't think I'll own a, an iCar anytime soon, so I don't think I'll be able to hear that. Um, I found it to be really cool. There are a couple different ones. There is a mini warning chime. as well as Rolls-Royce warning chime. Uh, maybe I'll try the Rolls-Royce one next after I get bored of the eye warning chime, uh, but for now we'll keep it at this. And then kind of tied into the audio is this maximum volume at startup. I'm sure this has happened to all of you. You know, you come home from work, you're jamming out to some song, you have it playing really, really loudly, and then you go in to go back to work in the morning early, and you haven't had your coffee yet, you're kind of all tired, and then your heavy metal or some dubstep or something starts blasting through your speakers, making you go completely deaf. Uh, so this maximum volume at startup, you can set that to always be 25%, so no matter what you do, um, it, will, it will always stay that way.
One of these uh, coding items that you can do that I find very, very important, especially if you don't have um, a higher trim or a M Sport version or something like that, is this in an electronic transmission control, there is a way for you to turn on sport transmission, which makes it a little bit faster. You can um, experience faster shifting whenever you put it in sport. On a lot of the uh, on a lot of cars, this is set to not active. I absolutely recommend setting this to active. Uh, you will absolutely love it. I think this transmission is still amazing, even though it's not dual clutch. It is still it is still really really awesome. The next one I wanted to talk about here is the window lifter interruption when opening a door. Um, so something that always frustrated me in the beginning of owning my BMW was that um, I would drive it, you know, with the windows down, it's nice outside, weather is great. Um, I arrive somewhere, I shut off the car, everything, and I roll the windows up, and then I go to open the door, and then what do you know, it just stops. So with this coated, it is then, it is now uh, really easy to do that. So as you can see, we can uh, roll it, open it, and it will continue to, um, it will continue to open. Let's try that again. I'm gonna open, and it is still closing. Found that to be really useful just because it was kind of a pain. Every time it would catch me off guard, I would uh, roll my windows up, open the door, and then boom, it stops doing it. So then I have to close it back up, start the car, roll it back up all the way, sit there and wait, and then get out of the car. It's just a little cumbersome, and this helps make that a lot better. Anyway guys, those are basically the top, say, five features that I really like in Beamer Code that allowed me to kind of at least make customize some of these features a little bit more um, and make them closer to what I wanted them to be like rather than what you just kind of get from the BMW. If you would like to see more videos like this, please like, share, and subscribe. There is more to come uh, for this time. We're just going to keep it at this. And other than that, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.